Welcome back to my channel. I'm Joe with Smoking Joe's Pit Barbecue. On today's video, I'm gonna talk about my food truck and my first three weeks of being in business. Stay tuned. All right, so as I mentioned in the introduction, this is my third week of being in business. Now, the first week that I opened up, I opened up only on a Saturday. It was a soft opening, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later. But I did open up on a Friday and Saturday the following week, and then the following week after that, a Friday and Saturday again. So I'm going into my fourth week of being in business. I'm opening up this Friday and Saturday again. Today is Wednesday. We receive our truck today. We also cold smoke our sausages. We made our sausages on Tuesday. We cold smoke them on Wednesday and we trim all of our briskets on Wednesday as well. So I just fired up my Bison 1000 gallon smoker. I'm going to be cold smoking my sausages. I've also got some things that I've got to do inside the food trailer. I'm out of barbecue sauce. I will not be showing the recipe, but I'll show you some clips of how I make my barbecue sauce as well. Now while I'm throwing on the sausages and making my barbecue sauce, I'm going to show you a couple of products that I'm using inside of my food truck that makes things a lot easier. And I'm also going to be talking about the experiences in my first three weeks of being in business. All right, so we are inside my food trailer right now. And as you can see, I've got a bunch of sausages sitting on my counter and some on that cooler right there. Now these sausages were made yesterday. I let them rest overnight in my fridge, let them bloom and let the casings dry up a little bit. That's going to give the smoke something to stick to uh, when the casing is nice and dry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash up my hands, throw some gloves on and separate these links because they're still linked together and I'll bring you guys right back. All right, so let's get to unlinking these sausages. I'll show you guys kind of what I do and I'll talk a little bit about my first few days in business. Now usually the end link right here, I will cut it really close to the knot, just like that. So what I also like to do, if the casing is a little bit longer, you have a long piece of casing right here that's a little bit dry because it's been sitting overnight. I'll clip that down just a bit as well. If not, that gets really chewy. So this is my process, pretty simple, okay? And I'll just repeat that process until I have all of my sausages unlinked. Now, while I do this, I do wanna talk about my first day of business, okay? It was on a Saturday. I only opened up on that one Saturday. It was a soft opening and we had some problems early on I could not get my stove to light and since I do make all of my sites uh, from scratch I obviously needed my stove to make my beans, my potato salad, um, my corn salad, uh, I do make some homemade uh, cornbread muffins so I needed my oven for that all as right, well. So it looks like my memory card was full so I had to fix that real quick. So as I was mentioning I make all of my sites from scratch and I do make some homemade cornbread and because of that, you know, me having issues with the gas, um, we were two hours behind and we ended up opening at 12 instead of 11. Now I did have a line of people waiting outside for me to open. Now some left and came back and unfortunately uh, some did not come back. And uh, if those customers are watching, you know, I want to apologize, um, but we did have some issues that came up. And again, that's why it was a soft opening. I think a lot of customers understand that on these soft openings, things will happen. Um, and that's why we call it a soft opening because we know that we're going to run into issues but I did not expect to, to not have gas but anyway so the following week I ended up fixing the problem so I don't have that problem with my gas again and what it was was the gentleman that built the trailer used a regulator that was too small he used a regulator that that's meant to be used for like a backyard barbecue grill not for a food truck that has a high volume stove and fryer and, and a flat top that uses a ton of gas. So um, the orifice was too small and it wasn't enough to power up uh, my stove, my fryer and my flat top at the same time. I just wasn't getting the volume of gas. But I ended up fixing that, you know, it cost me 60 bucks to get a new regulator, et cetera. But now we're, we're back on track and, and everything is good. But that first day, you know, we did have issues with our POS system. So the problem we had with our POS system was that on the pin pad, the customers have the option to either get their receipt emailed, uh, printed, um, or not print. And when the customer selected to not print the receipt, well, we wouldn't get a receipt in the kitchen. So 
the order would get lost and I'd have customers just waiting out there and I noticed that they were just standing there and I'm like what are you guys waiting for and they're like well we're waiting for our order and I was like well, what was your order he's like I don't know I, I selected not to not get a receipt so at that time I didn't know how to go into my POS to look up their order and obviously I know how to do that now but that one Saturday it became a problem because I had several customers without a receipt we didn't know what their order was so I had to go on the honor system and just ask them hey what did you order let me take care of you real quick and then we would get their orders out um, as as fast as we possibly could because they were waiting so fast forward to the following week um, you know I contacted my uh, point of sale company and we worked out some things and so now even if the customer selects no receipt I still get a receipt inside that kitchen and my brother and I can actually prepare their tray if it's for here or to-go box if it's to-go. So we no longer have that issue. And it is getting easier. Now it is a ton of work um, operating a food truck or any restaurant business. Um, I, I will tell you that since I'm only open on Friday and Saturday, our day starts on Tuesdays. Uh, we make our sausages on Tuesday and that's just a few hours, maybe two hours to make our sausages is what it took us to make this batch yesterday. Um, and pretty much we're done for the day unless we have a catering gig. Then we'll do that catering deal. And then uh, we're pretty much done for the day. Wednesday, today is Wednesday. We receive our truck, our food truck from Benny Keith. So I am using Creekstone briskets. So I get all of my briskets from them. I am getting my uh, pork products from Cisco Foods. So Cisco delivers to me as well. Uh, but the majority of my food does come from Benny Keith, amazing company, and I've got an amazing rep um, that has helped me out. So, as I mentioned, it is getting easier, but I will tell you that Friday and Saturday, uh, my brother and I work about 16-hour shifts, okay? Long days. That's the day that we're selling and that we're also cooking uh, for the next day. So, Friday, we're cooking for, we're open for business, obviously. And we're taking care of customers, getting them out. And Saturday, or Friday, I'm sorry, uh, we're also cooking our briskets for the next day. So I'm cooking, I'm cooking my briskets a day before, and then I put them in my food warmer for about 12 hours, 12 to 15 hours, and then we serve them the next day. And it is a ton of work, okay? But right now, I mean, we do want to open up more days. Right now, we are off essentially like four days if you will with the exception of Tuesday that we're making our sausages for a couple of hours and then Wednesday we come in and cold smoke our sausages which isn't too much of a a hard job if you will actually I gotta twist these some more but um, you know it's not it's not bad it's not bad but the days that you're open um, those are some long days again 16 hour shifts um, we get home tired um, you know, just, just from standing up all day, we really don't sit down and, and we're making our sides as well. So we prep our sides the day before. So Thursday, while the briskets are smoking, we're also starting to prep. So we're cutting up all of our jalapenos, our celery for the potato salad. Uh, we make our potatoes for the potato salad. Um, and just prepping, prepping everything. We leave everything ready. That way when we come in Friday morning around four o'clock, throw our ribs on, we can start to uh, throw our sites together. And again, we open up at 11. So again, if you guys are wanting to start a food truck business, number one, um, it's, it's nice being your own boss, but um, I expected it to be a ton of work. Obviously this stuff isn't easy. You know, running a barbecue business is not easy, um, especially uh, with the inflation and stuff, you know, that's going on right now. It is what it is, um, but it's a ton of work. It, it's not a walk in the park. I, I will tell you that. I didn't expect it to be, but I will tell you the only thing that I did not expect was, was these long hours, you know, these, these long days. But again, it's rewarding. I'm my own boss. I don't answer to anybody, and I love serving people. You know, I love serving um, barbecue to people and, and talking to them while they're here. And a lot of, believe it or not, a lot of my subscribers um, are coming eat at my food truck a lot of friends a lot of family and a lot of new customers you know I've got some loyal customers already <clears throat> being open three weekends you know I've got some pretty loyal customers 
and uh, you know, so I love I'm loving that part of it. You know, my my gratification in, in the barbecue business is is seeing people enjoying my food. You know, and I think any cook um, kind of experiences the same thing. That's that's kind of where we get our natural high, if you will, is is from seeing people enjoy our food. So I'm gonna finish up with these sausages. And I'll bring you guys back and we'll talk a little bit more. Stay tuned. All right, so we got the sausages on the smoker. We got 100 links. This will last us about two and a half days. I'm going to be running the pit at 150 degrees for two hours. The third hour, I'm going to crank it up to 175. And then the fourth hour, I'll crank the temperature up to 225 until the sausages hit an internal temperature of 145, 150 degrees. Then I'll throw them in ice, throw them on the fridge, and then we'll smoke them again the day of service. So I'm gonna shut the doors to the smoker. We're gonna head back inside the trailer and make my barbecue sauce. Stay tuned. All right, so I'm gonna make my barbecue sauce and I do make it five gallons at a time. And I will tell you that five gallons of barbecue sauce last us probably five days. And what we're doing, obviously, when the customer shows up, if they want a sandwich, you know, it does include barbecue sauce. So we ask them and we throw barbecue sauce on the sandwich. And then if they want uh, extra barbecue sauce, we have these little two ounce containers and they can take that home with them as well or eat it here. We'll put it on their tray. Now I do sell my barbecue sauce to go. So if a customer wants to take, let's say, eight ounces home or 16 ounces or 32 ounces home, uh, we can sell them a container of barbecue sauce as well. And I've got a lot of compliments on my barbecue sauce. Um, some customers said that it tasted a little bit like raspberry, but there's no raspberry in it. I can guarantee that. Uh, there's no fruit f uh, flavors, in fact, in my barbecue sauce, no artificial flavors. And I do make it from scratch. So what you see right now is what you get. Uh, I'm not going to give you guys my recipe. I kind of, I got to keep some things to myself, if you will. But um, it does, I do use quite a bit of uh, tomato ketchup as my base. So that's what you guys are going to get. I'll show you guys one more ingredient. Apple cider vinegar. So I use quite a bit of this. I could use my large measuring cup, but I'm being lazy right now. All right, so I'm going to get the rest of the ingredients in here. And I believe my Benny Keith guy just pulled up. So I'll bring you guys right back. All right, so it was a false alarm on the Benny Keith guy being here. So I've got all of my ingredients in here. And all I'm going to do next is bring it up to a boil, a light boil, if you will. Get everything mixed in there so you can see a few more ingredients. So if you can figure out... What I got in there, well, you've got my secret barbecue sauce recipe. So I'm just going to warm this up. Not really a boil, more of a simmer, if you will. Bring everything together. And it changes color. Right now you see it really red. You'll see once it's done, it'll have more of a barbecue sauce color to it. So I want to show you guys a couple of things that I use inside my food truck that makes my life easier. And if you guys are in the catering business or in the barbecue business, maybe you can use it for your business. I'll show you guys that as soon as this comes to a simmer, I'll show you guys the final color of it. And I'll show you guys those two products. Stay tuned. All right, so the sauce is ready. It came to a simmer and as you can see it took on a different color it's got a really nice kind of mahogany color and there it is I just want to warm it enough to melt the brown sugar that's in here so I give you three ingredients brown sugar ketchup and vinegar apple cider vinegar that's all you're gonna get <laughs> but uh, 
So now I just got to let it cool down a little bit. And I got a five gallon bucket that I pour it in with a spout. And that's what we use to fill up our, our uh, barbecue sauce bottles. So my Benny Keith rep actually brought my deliveries because it was going to be a while. And he knows that I need my briskets early so that we can trim them. So we are getting that ready. I'm going to let the sauce cool down a little bit. Then I'll pour it into the bucket and I'll bring you guys right back. All right, so now that my barbecue sauce is done, I want to show you a couple of products that I got that is making my life a lot easier when it comes to operating a food truck or any restaurant for that matter. Now I was buying my onions pre-sliced uh, when I first started, but that's really expensive. Um, it's, it's nice and convenient, but I got to tell you that um, once you get going, obviously you got to watch how much money you're spending on things and you can save about 75% uh, if you're slicing onions and doing it yourself and not having to buy them pre-sliced from your food su uh, supplier. So I've got a red onion here and this is my onion slicer. This is the Vevor uh, onion slicer and you can get it for different uh, thicknesses. So real simple, I just took the root and the stem part of the onion off as you can see right here. And all you got to do is place it, be careful because these blades are really sharp place it right here and just drop it down watch this that simple and you get perfect sliced onions for your barbecue uh, platter here's uh, four rings check that out really simple to do and again I was paying a lot of money for these prepacked uh, onions but now I'm doing them uh, myself now that I've got this machine and it's really easy to clean you just really spray it down and um, wipe it dry and you can take it apart and, and do that as well but check it out and you know that uh, no barbecue platter is complete unless you have some really nice onions and these are the perfect uh, thickness too so if you guys are running a restaurant or a food truck I highly recommend this brand Vevor and they're really uh, affordable as well and the quality is amazing okay so check them out I want to show you a couple more items that are making my life easier on my food truck, so stay tuned. All right, so here's the other product from the company Vevor. This is the food warmers that I'm using to keep my food warm. I keep my beans, my macaroni salad, and my corn salad uh, warm in these containers right here. So all you gotta do is take these pans out. And they're pretty deep. Uh, this is probably maybe a gallon and a half. And all you got to do is fill it up with water or about halfway, more or less, depending on what you're uh, keeping warm. If it's really heavy, you got to be careful that you don't overfill it. But um, this works amazing. And you can adjust the temperature on that dowel right there. And again, I've used this several times already and it has not let me down. So I'm really happy uh, to be using this as well. So once it's filled and you're done for the day, obviously you take your pans out and clean them up. It's also got a drain right here on this corner. Uh, let me see. So there's the drain right there. Um, you can open this up and then drain your water. Pretty simple as well. And just close it up and get it ready for the next day. Just wipe it dry, uh, clean the outside and get it ready for the next day. But uh, these work amazing. And again, the price is affordable. Um, these can get really expensive, uh, but this brand right here, Vevor, did a nice job on um, the quality of it, it's stainless steel on the outside and it has not let me down and we've used these um, probably a total of eight times already uh, for food service and it keeps everything nice and warm and if it gets too hot you can obviously adjust your your temperature control there so really happy with this product so again check out the links below if you guys are interested in getting any of these products from the company Vevor. Alright so the sausage has been smoking for two hours now and let's take a look at the color check them out got a really nice red color happening here so at this point and these are still really soft they're nowhere near ready I'm gonna crank the temperature up as I mentioned earlier and start cooking these sausages I think we got enough smoke on them all right so let me show you guys this these two sausages were touching right here and this is what happens when you have the sausages touch right there um, just a little spot right there but I'll fix that and it'll get nice and red just like uh, the rest of the sausage once these are done so 
go ahead and check them, make sure no other sausages are touching, and we should be good. All right, so I'm gonna shut the door to my smoker, crank the temperature up. We are trimming our briskets inside. And by the way, I am using Creekstone briskets, just in case you guys are wondering. Uh, we found the consistency is good. Um, marbling is good on the briskets. And then once they're completely smoked, they're really nice and juicy on the inside as well. So I've been really happy with those Creekstone briskets. All right, guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and close out this video. Just wanna show you guys a day in the life of a food truck operator, barbecue food truck operator. Um, I am at Buddy's Beer Barn here in El Paso, so if you guys are ever out here, please come see me and enjoy some barbecue. I am open right now Fridays and Saturdays from 11 until I sell out. And I am located at Buddy's Beer Barn at 10150 Montana Avenue in El Paso. There's some other amazing food trucks, Social Ice is out there, El Botanero, really good. Um, ceviche, Micha's Chicken, The Hut, and El Taquero Comer, amazing tacos. And then we have a new food truck, a denial uh, food truck. It serves Mediterranean food. You can see Buddy's Beer Barn in the back, which is a drive-through beer barn. You can actually drive through, pick up your, your beer of choice, and uh, grab some ice if you want to as well. Really nice people that run this place here, uh, but they did turn it into a food truck park, as you can see. There's plenty of seating. They are making these really nice benches for customers to sit down and enjoy their food. As you can see, there's one right there. But really happy here at Buddy's Beer Barn. Uh, it's been a really good experience. But you just want to do this vlog or vlog style, whatever you want to call it. And a lot of you guys have been asking, hey, how's my food truck going? Well, here you have it. You know, talked about some of the experiences that I've had. Um, but we made a lot of changes and the issues that we had um, early on no longer exist. Obviously, my gas issue has been fixed. I've got a really nice larger regulator. So I'm not going to have the gas flowing issues anymore. So thanks for watching guys. Again, if you guys are ever in El Paso, come hang out, say hi, and enjoy some amazing barbecue here at Buddy's Beer Barn. Take care guys, see ya.